Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Hello. Oh, what a day it has been. Back to back. So how are you doing? I thought maybe we can have a cup of coffee together today. Hmm? Here's why. Because it's so good to take some time and enjoy a moment of doing nothing. You know why? Because doing nothing, believe it or not, is doing something. Ha, what a concept, right? Doing nothing is doing something. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, what a lot of people ask me, what is hypnosis? How does our brain work? And what is the difference between hypnotherapy and regular cognitive therapy? So today I'm going to, because it is National IT Day, I'm going to turn things around and explain to you in my perception, in my philosophy, and how I explain to other people what our brain and how our body and everything works uh, just like a computer, right? Hi, Sedo John, how are you? So if you are interested to learn more about it, I'm also giving you a gift today. For those of you who are having a little bit of a stress and anxiety, automatically do this for me. Text on your phone, just grab your phone. I don't have my phone. Ah, there it is. Just grab your phone and text the number 818-221-2797 and text stress. And by doing so, I will send you a link so you can listen in the comfort of your home or anywhere that you are my hypnosis, relaxation, that it says stress no more. So again, it's 818-221-2797. Text that number and you will get my audio recording MP3 and you will have stress no more. So that's number one. Number two, Make sure you subscribe below because I want to be in touch with you. And by the way, you can catch up with all the YouTubes and everything that you have not caught up. Now, let's just sit back and think about what is our brain like? It's just this computer, the same thing that you're either on the phone or I don't know many people who have never used a computer or seen a computer. So. Our pineal gland right here, which the dictionary calls it the third eye, I like to consider our pineal gland the motherboard. Everything, all the files are stored in here. We think, we analyze, we judge, we criticize. Everything is right here, right? So every single file, every experience, every habit and behavior that you have had from the day that you are born, from the time that they put you on your mother's bosom and there is that touch and the baby feels the touch of a mother, the connection to the heart, to the entire thing and from the sounds, from everything we begin to incorporate all experiences by looking, listening, and learning, right? So everything gets stored in your brain. That is the motherboard. The second thing is our brain. Our brain is where the data is stored. All the data, everything is stored right there. Next is our body. Our body is the case, the casing of the computer, right? So hello, Joshua. So we have the pineal gland and we have the brain, which is the data and the body is the casing. 
So every computer comes in a case, and you already know that, either a laptop or the computer itself. Now, you would say, then where is the subconscious mind? I like to call the subconscious that little chip, which is the RAM, the memory. And everything is stored in there. Remember, I've explained this, and here's again. It's that chip that is stored either in a video camera or in a regular camera or in our computer. That chip stores and records everything. So when I ask you to go back all the way to perhaps elementary, kindergarten, and remember your best friend, maybe the school you attended, your favorite games that you used to play, maybe even your bedroom. Let's make it more detailed. If you had a, a pet or where did you go and play? The kitchen in your house that you grew up in. So all that, you see, we can get so detailed because when we relax a client and we take them from this conscious level to the subconscious level, we can become so detailed in remembering memories, just like rewinding it all the way because that RAM, the memory bank, it can have a lot of storage. Now, the heart is the energy. It pumps all the energy into the computer, into your data, into your system. Hmm? Now, and you would say, okay, I like to call it the eyes being the monitor. Our ears are the speakers. The mouth is the microphone and the hand is the mouse. Isn't that interesting? So when we think about it, our feet are what moves us forward. That is if we want to. So today being International IT Day, I thought, how would it be if I explained how we function? Now, I said all that because I've been getting a lot of client, clients who are going through stress and anxiety. And someone emailed me yesterday and said, do you work with OCD? Here's my thoughts on OCD. Hypnotherapy can help tapping within and making that shift. So what I say, the evoking, embracing, evolving, we evoke what was, which is tapping into that RAM, tapping into that memory bank to see where did this habit or behavior begin. And it could be OCD, it can be a habit of smoking, it can be a habit of whatever habit that we have. And I wonder what habits that you've had that no longer work for you, right? Go ahead and share. It could be uh, smoking. It could be uh, a habit of drinking, excessive drinking, excessive gambling, excessive, even excessive exercise to a point that when you don't do it, and then you say, okay, I'm going to start losing weight. And then someone goes into four days a week, five days a week, six days a week of exercising or running without preparing, without gradually getting into it. The body may go into a shock, a septic shock that sometimes our body does, our stomach does, that acidic feeling of it, right? So it's like saying, yeah, stop. You just put something in me that did not sit well. The OCD is known as obsessive compulsive disorder. 
I like to call it and shift it. And when I work with my clients and I say, you know, when it says disorder, that means it's out of balance. It's off balance. When it is obsessive, I like to call it overly. And instead of obsessive compulsive, even though it is a compulsive a reaction, I like to change it and say it is a control issue. So you would say a control issue. Yes. For those who clean a lot, who buy a lot of cleaning products, for those who constantly do, uh, uh, they have to check doors, check doorknobs, check windows, make sure it's closed, make sure it's safe. Throughout the years, for over 20 years of working as an experience, not only I have gone through my own transformations, but over 20 years of experience in helping my clients through hypnotherapy and stress management, I've realized that that compulsive disorder is very much an order. Because while we are doing that, they, the person who's doing it, is totally in control. A warped sense, but it's the, the real truth. By doing so, they manage to keep everything in control, their control. It's not about anyone else. That means they must find a balance. And by doing that same method, same behavior over and over, over and over, over and over, they feel safe, a sense of safety within themselves. Sometimes it's not even conscious. It is the subconscious mind that has taken this behavior as this is how I keep order in place within me by making sure that the locks are in place by making sure the lights are out and I will check the lights on, off, on, off, or I may, I must make sure that everything is clean. And what is clean? Is it the clean product, this product disinfected, it's not good enough? Or clean it to a point that their finger and their finger, the skin, is wearing off because they've used so much cleaning product, wore off even gloves because they constantly clean, clean, clean. Two o'clock in the morning, they get up and clean, clean the back top every single day. So my question is, what in your life do you need to clean or wash away or cleanse and heal internally? Believe it or not, 87% of those who have OCD that need to have a sense of control, an inner sense of safety, they have experienced trauma in their life, especially at a very young age. And because they could not control what happened, they could not control either what they felt, what happened to them, or what they saw happening. They developed this sense of a disorder that we call it so, but in their mind, if I focus only on doing this, that I am safe, that I am protected, then this is all I need because I shut everything else out. And by shutting everything else out, I am good where I am. I hope this makes sense to you. And if it does, please just hashtag one. 
if you are present, by all means, share something. Have you had any type of a habit or a behavior that you thought it was a negative and yet it worked for you for the duration of the time that you were doing? Perhaps either you or someone you know has a tendency of doing something over and over that a lot of people cannot understand. They don't understand you. They don't understand that behavior. And that's because no one understands how to tap within. You see that memory bank, that little chip inside? That holds a lot of information from the time that you are a little girl or a little boy. A lot of people who cannot sleep very well, I usually ask them how long it has been. You see, when we do a timeline and we go back to another time and a place, and when we're, we tap within this data, opening the files, since we cannot delete anything from the day that we are born until this very moment, you cannot delete any experience in your life. But what we can do is watch and rewind everything with absolutely no emotions connected to it. And how I like to do it with my client is say, just imagine yourself being an editor of a movie. And the editor's job is only to edit. And they cut and paste and it's a tedious job. And they're there because on the movie screen, it can be, which is you going back to another time and a place. We can be watching a lot of things that happen and took place and experiences that you looked, listened, learned, experienced, felt, right? But at that very moment, you're only editing the file and there is absolutely no emotion or else editors are going to be experiencing, oh my God, murder all day. I mean, the Jason coming and stabbing all day or people who are making love and they're going to be, oh yeah, lovey-dovey. No, the editor is like, you know what? It's just a movie. Where do I cut? What do I do? Where do I put the music? Where do I attach that, right? So it becomes like a producer, an editor. You're just watching it with no feelings. And that's exactly what we do. We rewind back to find the cause of it, not the symptoms. So when I work with you, we peel away the band-aid. And so we can tap into that memory bank pull the files from the data, edit, and shift. So if it was a negative experience that caused the trauma, recognizing it and knowing that now, today, sitting right here in my chair in my office, or for those who I work with through Zoom, you are safe. And because within all of us, there is that little girl, there is the little child, little girl, little boy, the child within us. We also have the parent within us and the adult that we are. We can easily, as the adult, be kinder to the inner child making sure that the inner child is safe and letting the inner child know that you can now be more responsible and take ownership to help guide, mentor, even plan something to nurture and heal. And then the parent within you that it's always there to hold your hand and guide you and safeguard you, just like 
that casing that safeguards the computer, the entire computer, every essence of you. The body is there for you because it houses everything. It protects you, shields you, everything, every organ, every nerve, every muscle, every essence of you is in this body. So be kinder to this incredible body of yours that does all the shielding and protecting you instead of constantly hurting it, right? And by doing so, once the conscious and the subconscious agree, the heart gives more energy and love, kindness, gratitude, and therefore, just like everything else, we no longer need to have that kind of a negative control, but realizing I can have a better balance in my life. I can stand up for who I am. I can stand up and protect the inner child. I am safe. I, which is the adult, can keep me safer. And that's the promise that happens internally and externally. I hope this was easier for you to understand. Uh, it says, hi, Linda. Hello, Pearl. It says, it makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm glad it's making sense because, you know, there is a saying, it says, for those who believe, no proof is necessary. And for those who don't believe, no proof is possible because if you're not here to believe in you no matter what I say no matter what doctor you go no matter who holds your hand it's about you believing in yourself and saying I matter so the work that I do is first and foremost, help you raise the bar so you find the worth and value within yourself and know that you matter. Who you are matters because you are a gift of God. And it can be any God that you believe in, universe, the mighty God, but there is a higher power within all of us. And today, I wanted to drink a toast, maybe with coffee. So you have more gratitude. They just celebrated a veteran who celebrated his 108th birth date. 108 years old. So kudos to you for not only serving for our country, defending our country, being in the front lines. And you know, when we speak to someone who has so much experience, and today they're even sound in mind enough to know that today is their birthday, that's a lot. You may call it technology, the data, the RAM, this body, whatever it is. We have to say kudos to them. I take my hat off to this gentleman because the stories that they have, it's surpassable. It's unsurpassable. We all have a story. But I want you to think about yours and say, what story do I have to hold on to? The one that they told me or the ones that I am ready to create and make my own? What I experienced in the past cannot be deleted but today, I choose 
to create my own new stories and live my life with the way that I like to create, plan, do your own architecture. So for National IT Day, for those who work with computers, thank you because I am looking beyond what is and realizing the capacity that we have in becoming better and healing within starts with one thing. Remember this, you're only one choice, one thought away from transforming and going from pain to gain because you do matter. My name is Lisa Bubari your expert, hypnotherapist, healing expert. And for those who, of you who are interested, I have a breakthrough coming. And if sign up with us, sign up on my website. Uh, you will see the information. It's an hour and a half of uh, being with me via Zoom. We can find you can find patterns, recognize your own patterns, and then do your own work. Um, and for that, I thank you for being here, being present, and thank you. Until next week, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.